afternoon and welcome to NCIA's Industry Essentials Educational Webinar Series, our premier digital educational platform featuring a variety of interactive programs to provide you timely, engaging, and essential education when and where your team needs it most. My name is Brian Gilbert, the Deputy Director of Events here at National Cannabis Industry Association, and I can't tell you how excited I am to welcome NCIA's dedicated network of members and supporters to the very first live broadcast of our 2022 Industry Essentials webinar program. Today, I'm very happy to be joined by some all-star members of NCIA's Marketing and Advertising Committee for an information-packed and fast-paced edition of our Committee Insight Series today, following up on their recent lightning lesson showcased on the expo floor at our Cannabis Business Summit and Expo this past December. They'll be delivering a power-packed, inspiring presentation where you'll get the 10 tips your company needs to develop an award-winning campaign in 2022, as well as announcing some special details surrounding the next edition of our annual marketing-focused content. To kick things off, I'd like to welcome our presenter for today's, our presenters for today's session, Melinda Adamek, the Senior Director of Strategic Partnerships at OMI Industries, as well as Tara Cummins, the CEO and founder of Avans Media to the virtual stage. Welcome to NCIA's Industry Essentials Educational Webinars. Great to have you all both here virtually today. How are you doing? Awesome. Yes, excited to be here. Fantastic. Well, um, Tara and Melinda are going to lead each other in an introduction of each other in a few seconds. But before they dove into that, they did want to provide some context and background as to how they began working together on NCIA's Marketing and Advertising Committee. So I'm going to throw it right over to them to kick today's presentation off and then sit into the background to help moderate things from here. Thanks, Brian. Hi, everyone. I just wanted to give you a, a little bit of insight into um, NCIA's Marketing and Advertising Committee. We also are known as the MAC. Um, we are cannabis industry stakeholders with deep experience in marketing, advertising, and PR. Um, we also have elections every year. Shout out to Michael Kaufman and Nicole DeMeo, who are on the webinar with us today. Thank you guys for coming. And um, just really excited to, to be here with all of you. Melinda? Um, yeah, so all of our committee members have joined to advance, educate, and celebrate the cannabis industry, right? That's why we're here. Um, it's people, it's programs, best practices, and really to develop thought leadership opportunities. So all the tips we're presenting today are coming from our esteemed colleagues on the MAC, and we could not be more excited to share them with you. So this year, our the MAC is chaired by Carrie Radstack of Hippo Premium Packaging. There are 22 of us. Um, I personally love the breadth and depth of, of our committee. I'm always learning something from it from someone. I agree, and it's my second year. I'm very excited um, to finally have also some opportunities to be in person. So um, you know, we got to share this with some of the people that were attending the conference last um, December, um, but there's lots of committees and lots of volunteer opportunities. So please keep an eye out um, NCIA members for your inboxes. Um, you'll see some of that information on committee process applications. So I'm gonna introduce you now, Melinda. Uh, for those of you who don't know Melinda, Melinda Adamak is the Senior Director of Strategic Partnerships for OMI Industries. They're a global leader in plant-based odor abatement solutions. Adamac manages all aspects of the cannabis industry for OMI's consumer and industrial brands, including serving as brand manager for the very famous Cannabolish plant-based smoke odor remover. Um, prior to joining OMI, Melinda spent eight years as a senior VP in two public relations agencies in the DC area and has experience with huge brands like Ace Hardware, McDonald's, Microsoft, routers, Rosetta Stone, and the US Postal Service, just, just to name a few. Um, she's very experienced in using a variety of marketing disciplines and knows a great deal about the financial sector, having spent time as a marketing manager and a associate VP uh, for FBR Capital Markets. Melinda has worked on a variety of award-winning public relations and marketing campaigns in the disciplines of finance and CPG. And she is a member of the Cannabis Marketing Association's MAC Committee. Thanks for being my cohort today, Melinda. Thanks, Tara. Um, she is my partner in crime today. Um, so Tara Cummins is the founder and CEO of Avans Media. Um, she's been active in the cannabis industry since 2015. 
Um, so that's like a super veteran. And she's um, taken brands and businesses from startup to IPO. So really run the gamut. She's an award-winning marketer herself um, with recognitions from the Public Relations Society of America and Social Media Club. Tara has also been judges for many award programs, um, including when she was a co-publisher and a producer of a magazine and a trade show, which is a huge undertaking. And this is her third year on um, NCIA's Mac, and she is the co-chair of the Best of 420 subcommittee. With you. With me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what is the Best of 420? So. In the midst of cannabis's essential status, the MAC members wanted to celebrate the many creative campaigns developed in, in and around the annual 420 holiday. And the inaugural year, which was last year, um, we generated nearly 30 entries. And this was a huge, huge feat. Um, anything from a publicly traded company to a small state to sing, single state startup. So we were really excited about that. So this year, Melinda and I have the honor of serving on the Best of 420 subcommittee. There are five members on our committee, Michael Kaufman being among them, who's on this webinar. And I've already been blown away by the many ideas and enthusiasm for this year's Best of 420 event. And that's why we're here. So without exception, all the entries were remarkable. Um, this year, NCIA is bringing it back bigger and better than ever. Um, while 2021 Best of 420 was completely digital, um, in 2022, NCIA plans to announce the winners at the upcoming Cannabis Business Summit and Expo, which is taking place July 20th through the 22nd in San Francisco, and provide even more exposure to top entrants. So the judging criteria will be announced in Q1 of 2022. If you haven't already started planning for 420, now is a great time to do so. So without further ado, <laughs> let us begin. 10 tips in 20 minutes, a guide to winning campaigns. Okay, so when we asked the MAC members for the very best tips, um, we, we sourced this from those leaders within the MAC committee. Every single one of the answers echoed this sentiment. It's super important to start your campaign with goals first. Um, not just award-winning campaigns, all your campaigns, because success is only achievable when it's measured, right, Melinda? That's right, Tara. Campaign purpose and measurement is key, not just for campaign success, but for creating award-winning campaigns. It's important to note that it's always a good idea to capture your baselines and what you're going to be measuring in order to actually measure your success. I have a feeling that we may be coming back to that one in a bit. Yeah, that's a big one. Um, be authentic and personable is our tip number two. Um, this also was something that came up over and over again within the MAC members. Um, today's most successful cannabis brands have to show their authenticity and personality um, in order to resonate with consumers. Standing out means campaigns that celebrate consumers as much as they celebrate the brand. Yeah, authenticity is totally an important aspect of building a community or purpose-driven campaigns like advocacy or education campaigns. I think it's important to dig deep into who your brand is and who your customers are and, and really lean into that overlap in all your campaigns. So tip number three, collaborate and be creative. Campaigns are a great opportunity to look at other brands inside or outside the cannabis industry to collaborate with. Yeah, collabs are great because you get to leverage each other's communities. So what a, a great collab can launch your company in, or product into a completely new community environment. Tip number four, think beyond the campaign date. Our next, this one is really important, especially for brands or purpose-driven initiatives. I agree. Um, you could start a campaign anytime you want and end it anytime you want, as long as it's around that 420. It doesn't have to be, you know, beginning on 420 or the day before 420. So that's up to you. We were talking about this yesterday, right, Melinda? Uh, exactly. So tip number five, we are blazing. Wherever you can and wherever your budget allows, incorporate as many assets as possible for the biggest ROI and impact. Yeah, we know it's a lot of work to develop a 360 approach for a campaign, but it is so important. We all know we're bombarded with messaging all around us, um, exposed to 10,000 messages a day. So this is really important. 
Tip number six, engage your community. You know, the cannabis community has already has a reputation for creating deep and lasting relationships. So this is sort of a no brainer for cannabis brands, but great cannabis brands are constantly looking uh, for ways to engage their community in really personalized ways. Yes, and we definitely saw this last year too. So your community and your customers um, can be your collaborators too. Community is such an important aspect of cannabis and branding as many people on our webinar know. I think number six is really important, especially because we're constantly seeing entrance into the cannabis world. Creating a winning campaign doesn't have to be expensive. In fact, arguably the most creative campaigns are those on a tight budget. Um, if you have the inspiration, but not the budget, be sure to focus on one or two applications that are really important for your KPIs and definitely get started on the campaign earlier because campaign costs can really spiral at last minute implementation requests. Absolutely. I think that's such a great point, Tara. And tight budgets, I think, are some of the most underappreciated campaigns. We definitely take that into account for 2022's best of 420 submissions. Yeah. Number seven, number eight is a is a is a passion of mine, and that's tapping into customer passions. Uh, mm -hmm. I think this Sometimes brands and cannabis companies get myopic, my, myopic about their own branding and their own messaging, and they forget to dig deep into the customer's point of view. Um, this is your opportunity to really tap into full range of your customer's passions and cement that relationship with them. When your customer says, they really get me, that's a priceless and in indelible impression. Customer empathy and metrics aren't at odds at all, but they might be different metrics. Yes, totally true. Um, example, customer lifetime values. So that's a metrics, you know, that you should be looking at to improve year over year consistently um, so that you know you're really connecting with your customers. Um, an even more immediate metric might be returning customers or even seeing open rates in your emails. Um, I also love seeing brands who are deeply connecting on social media with their consumers. That's a place where you really need to get your customer. It can make all the difference. Tip number nine, wah, wah. No one loves to be reminded of the regulatory environment, but with the cannabis industry, it's just one we're all deeply familiar with. Absolutely. And the cannabis industry um, isn't just the state and federal laws that we need to be looking at, but also very specific regulations around marketing and advertising um, when it comes to cannabis in those states. Oh, so true. Like the federal, the FCC's material disclosure requirements on influencer posts or age gating or website privacy. Yeah. I mean, when you look at all that and all of the hand holding and hand held and, you know, being tied up in that way, really these campaigns just stand out even more. The fact that they can be that creative and kind of break through all of that um, hindrance, if you will. I totally agree. Okay, this is my favorite tip. Have fun. Tip number 10. So advertising, marketing, and PR. I mean, we got into this business because it's really fun, right? I was in financial services before. Not, not as much fun. Sometimes it's fun. But these are all big, important investments for any company. Um, even though it's serious business, you have to have fun. There's plenty of room for fun. I completely agree with you, Melinda. And when you think about other non-cannabis brands like Wendy's on social media, they even make fun of themselves. So there's so much room for this in the cannabis industry. Yep. Oh, that was pretty power packed. That was a good speed round. Yes. Um, now I think it's a great time to be thinking about your 420 campaigns. Um, and the, for the first time today, we're announcing the 2022 best of 420 categories and judging criteria. Yes, the submission process is set up to open in mid-May, so this is great timing, and we'll be announcing the winners next July at the annual NCIA conference. So, our categories. And notice how these categories, one more back, there you go, perfect. Uh, notice how these categories align with the mission of NCAA. Some of you create campaigns that may fit more into one of these than the others, but when you submit, you'll be asked why you chose that category. Also note that we're not creating categories based on medium. We wanted to lift the lid on mediums and reach for the stars. We wanna recognize that some promotional mediums are limited by state. So this even also evens the playing field just a touch. Yes. And we've also created subcategories for B2B and B2C. Um, these campaigns can be very different in objectives and results. So we wanted to make sure that we celebrate both types of campaigns. Sometimes B2B campaigns get swept under the rug, um, but there's some seriously brilliant B2B campaigns. 
Yes, I totally agree with you. And then as you submit your campaigns, keep in mind what our judging criteria is. With the exception of creativity, the criteria are all relative to you. Your community impact is defined by your community, regardless of the size of your community. Um, yes, and the same is true for results. So we're gonna go back to that tip that we shared earlier about baselining your results. So you'll be asked to, to provide your goals. What were your baselines? In other words, the judging is not on how the campaign did, but how did it do in your eyes? Did it meet your goals? Did it reach your metrics? Um, it's not just how impressed the judges are with the metrics, but how it impacted your business. Love now that. it seems like a good time to open up Q&A. If you have any other things to add, Tara, otherwise we'll toss it over to Brian to manage our Q&A. Yeah, fantastic. And it's 120 right now. This is exactly on time. This is fantastic. Perfect. We got those 10 tips in 20 minutes. Um, I think that we had, uh, we had a quick question from Dana um, that might help us kick off the Q&A period. She wanted to, um, for us to go back over tip number five. Um, I think she had to step away for a quick second. Um, so let's run back to tip number five. And if you all wouldn't mind diving into your discussion topic or discussion points surrounding this one. And then if you wanted to expand on it anymore, um, Dana, feel free to ask in another um, additional question revolving around tip number five inside of the chat room now. Yeah, I mean, I think we just are trying to encourage you to use whatever assets you have at your disposal with a 360 approach. Not everybody has everything and certainly cannabis brands have, you know, love hate with social media. Um, but we're just, we just want you to remember that you have assets that you want to incorporate to the extent that you can for any of your campaigns, whether they're 420 or not. Yeah, I would just add to that, just get creative. You know, don't forget that your employees are also assets and part of the community that can help spread your message. And we saw that with some of the um, the entries last year um, and not just dispensary employees, but if that's a B2B employee approach too. Um, so just thinking about all the different ways in which you can communicate your campaign. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you for elaborating on that, Tara and Melinda. And it sounds like uh, Dana had a follow-up question um, asking if you could discuss the restrictions on text advertising. Um, and I know that that might be, that might be a pretty wide open uh, topic to dive into. Um, so if you have any thoughts on how that might relate to the, the tips you're providing here or relate to a 420 campaign um, in particular, any thoughts amongst the panel there? I think that sounds like a great topic for another webinar. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's. A, I mean, it's a pretty deep. I do know that there are some articles um, on the NCIA, NCIA blog about um, restrictions for tech, text marketing. So I think that's a great place to start. But I actually think it's a great idea for another webinar. Yeah, I love that. Definitely. I would say we should pull in our co um, Mac committee member Eric. Yeah. Into that conversation, yeah. he's a regulations guru. But I would also say for uh, you know, the sake of everyone's in different states, different regulations, you really do want to make sure that you are adhering to those regulations. So I would seek out some expertise that is in your local market. Yeah, perfect. Well, I, I and I really appreciate that question, Dana. I, I do know that we have to actually sketch out and flesh out some additional webinar topics for the MAC committee outside of um, all the supporting work surrounding the best of 420 campaign contests that we're going to be doing this spring and summer. So um, we're going to continue this conversation offline and um, we'll keep you posted as that develops. Um, I can see that also being a great uh, proposal topic for our upcoming Cannabis Business Summit and Expo taking place in July. Um, so yeah, thank you for addressing that. Um, perhaps we'll carry on the conversation surrounding that individual um, aspect of today's conversation in NCIA Connect as well. So um, stay on the lookout for a follow-up email um, and uh, hopefully we can get some more um, feedback and resources to you and your team surrounding that um, topic. Okay, perfect. Um, so real quick question that we had from Sarah before we dive into the question from Morgan um, Sweeney. So thank you for both posting those. Um, Sarah, we will be uh, providing a recording of today's session. Um, typically takes about 48 hours for us to turn that around. So stay on the lookout for a follow-up email that'll be sent to all of you all. You'll get uh, first access to that on our YouTube channel later this week. We're also um, dropping a blog post later this week with all this information and all the information about the uh, best of 420. I, I just got it to Nicole yesterday. So 
I'm going to give her a chance to recover, and then, but very soon. Perfect. Yeah. And then moving forward um, between now and the next sort of big announcement surrounding the um, application process for um, applying to be a judge, um, we will use the blog post that um, Tara is referencing as sort of the main landing page uh, for all of that information. So um, over the next few weeks, as the campaign and contest details are being finalized, um, use that as a reference and then feel free to reach out to any one of us um, or members of the MAC committee to ask an additional question. And then, okay, perfect. And then we had a question from Morgan. Um, we have a lot of people going back and forth in the chat room, so I appreciate that engagement. If you do have any um, specific questions that you want to make sure don't get lost, don't be shy and post them to the Q&A board now, and then we can use that as a reference point moving forward. Uh, but Morgan's question um, it says, when conducting hyperlocal PR initiatives, uh, what do you find to be the most valuable to reporters specifically? And how do you approach hyperlocal cannabis public relations efforts in particular? And that's a two-part question. Um, do any of you all want to dive into that one in particular, Tara? Yeah. <laughs> Does anybody want to take that one, Tara? Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I think always, you know, it goes back to your community. What's happening in your community? What what is what is important in your local community? And then also what is happening in the news in your local community? I think when you find that, you know, if you think about it as a Venn diagram, when you find that place where those things are overlapping, that's really your, your you know, sweet spot for, for hyper-local PR campaigns. Um, you know, I also think that uh, partnering with local spokespeople can be a really powerful thing, um, especially hyper-local. Hyper There's an affinity there that is sometimes harder to accomplish on a broader, more national scale. So those are just some tips that I have um, about that. Um, you know, I, I mean, I, hyper-local PR campaigns can be some of the most effective in my book. It sort of goes back to, you know, the creativity that is required, but also the impact you can make because you have maybe not as big a reach, but a deeper reach. Yeah, I mean, I would say, you know, like adding on to Tara's too, like just focused on what's happening in your community, but in your um, actual outreach to yeah. the members of the media too, uh, I'm a huge proponent on doing your homework. So um, when I was in PR, you know, we get dinged from reporters mm -hmm. not doing our homework. Why are yep. you pitching me this story? You don't know anything about what I cover, anything about me personally. So I would say if you're in, you know, a hyper focused PR campaign, I would definitely take the time to research who you're pitching your story and why they would be interested in that or if they have mm -hmm. some sort of personal connection and then you can bet that they'll probably be interested. That's awesome advice. Hey, Brian, can I back up to the one of the questions about the judges? Because I want to talk about that really quick. Somebody asked in the chat if the yes. judges had been selected. Um, so I so I want to let everybody know that we are have not selected the judges yet, but we have sort of discussed the parameters around which judge selections will happen. Uh, first of all, we want to make sure that the judging panel is diverse. Um, in, in every way, um, including a variety of perspectives. So we expect to be tapping into the sustainability committee um, within NCIA, as well as the DEI committee within uh, NCIA as, and the marketing committee. Um, I think we've decided that uh, judges will need to be members of, uh, of the NCIA, um, and, but we're expecting a fairly decent sized judging panel. The idea is to give everybody a chance to, uh, to have their perspective shine um and and we just really want to make sure that that's that's part of it for everybody thanks yeah thank thank you for elaborating on that tara um those are some of the details that i reference are are still to be finalized and will be the next sort of major announcement um outside of the membership requirement that we are going to instill to um, apply to be a judge we will be um, inviting a select group of last year's finalists, as well as some outside industry experts, um, specifically with the help of Michael Kaufman from the Clio Awards, um, to identify those people that definitely need to have their perspectives represented in the judge process. 
Um, as far as application, the application process for submitting a campaign, since we are instituting an in-person element to this year's contest that does come um, with a cost. So there is an associated entry fee for all non-members to submit a campaign um, as part of the contest this year. So we're sort of incentivizing membership. Um, the uh, All NCIA members will be provided complimentary ability to submit um, as many campaigns as they wanted to. So if you have any questions um, surrounding, you know, the benefits of membership and how that um, uh, relates to the contest and your participation in it, um, don't hesitate to reach out to either myself or anybody else on the, the marketing and advertising committee over the next few weeks to um, express any comments, questions, or concerns. Mm -hmm. Hey, Sarah, you asked if the judges will be able to enter the contest and the answer is yes, they just will not be able to evaluate their own submissions. Yes. Yeah, the criteria and the judging process, while still being kink, the kinks being worked out, we're going to have um, specific scoring so that we'll be able to bypass if your company is submitting an award, you wouldn't be voting for that. Perfect. Yeah. And um, if you um, are interested in uh, getting involved with Cannabis Business Summit and Expo later this summer, it is going to be taking place from July 20th through the 22nd. Um, the plans is to host the sort of in-person um, award element for the Best of 420 campaign on the final day. Um, so if you are selected to be a finalist um, on one of, uh, if you are selected to be a finalist, um, you will have some incorporation into the actual in-person event as well. So um, if exhibiting or contributing to the educational programming isn't somebody, something that's really ever lined up with your brand or your marketing campaign surrounding our conference or trade show, do sort of keep this in the back of your all's um, heads over the next few months as a really great way to, to leverage your campaign um, and to get involved with the conference and trade show in July. Okay, perfect. And then, um, and then I guess um, I don't see any questions coming in on the Q&A board. So let me just really quickly um, do a quick recap of the last year's finalists. So if you all weren't a part of the best of 420 marketing campaign contest last year, um, there were eight finalists that we selected. Um, those include Glasshouse Farms, Wana, Nug Club, Green Thumb Industries, plus Rebel, Golden State Greens and Higher Celebrations. Um, they all featured some really fantastic campaigns that really spread the gamut across the mediums and really factored into our decision to not have the entry categories be based around campaign types this year. Um, if you want to learn more about each of these finalist campaigns that really exemplified what the contest was supposed to represent last year, you can go to our blog. We have two really comprehensive landing pages and blog posts um, in the Industry Insights blog that chronicle all of the campaign finalists from last year, um, as well as another blog that chronicles sort of the live broadcast that we did as well, um, talking about the three different winners that all had different ties for first, second, and third place, um, and give you some really great um, experience to relive that um, virtual experience in advance of submitting a proposal for this year's contest. Okay. And then, and then if you all wanted to get a better understanding as to all of the um, entries that we did receive last year, we received around, I think, 30 or so. Um, so there was a number of uh, additional campaigns that were submitted by all the companies that you all see here. So um, if you are ever interested in learning more about the different companies that participated in last year's events and wanting to you know, speak to some of the people that might not have been selected as finalists, learn more about their experience with the contest and how um, you all could leverage your submission this year to be um, positioned as best as possible. Um, feel free to reach out to me and happy to make those connections. Okay. All right. Well, we're at um, about halfway through the hour. I know that what we said in the original session description was that we were going to try and um, just elaborate on that 10 tips in 20 minutes lightning lesson. So um, if we don't have any additional questions from the audience, um, we can transition into the outro of today's program, um, just highlighting a few upcoming virtual and in-person activities that NCIA is conducting that we'd love all of your all's participation with, while leaving the chat room open for a few more minutes to get those questions um, or any additional uh, passing of the virtual business cards amongst the audience members.
All right, I didn't see a question come in right when I said that. So um, do does uh, do either Melinda or Tara, do you have any final thoughts that you wanted to leave the audience members in um, before we transition into the outro of today's program? My one thing is that I wanna go back to slide number one. When you do, when you do think about what you wanna submit for this, and I encourage everybody, all, all sizes, all budgets to encourage for this, uh, to submit for this, but track those metrics. That's gonna be your, your biggest uh, advantage in this, and you'll be glad you did uh, because it's going to differentiate you in the submissions. Yes, for sure. I would say that, and um, I think tip 10, have fun. For sure. Um, but I would definitely recommend going back to even just looking at the blog post, not that you have to watch another webinar, um, but taking a look at what the winning campaigns did last year, just give you some ideas of um, everyone that won last year took their approach and executed it across multiple channels. So I would say that's also something to kind of think about. And, um, you know, you might be inspired here and there by some of the campaigns that you read. There were some great ones last year. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I I always find myself going back to that for for inspiration on, mm -hmm. on unique, you know, virtual campaigns as well as in person events. Like we said, those those campaigns really really spread the gamut um, last year. So excited to see some new campaigns um, this coming year as well. All right, perfect. Well, thank you both Melinda and Tara for joining us today. I know that you all have presented this session for us twice now um, on top of the in-person event that we did in December. So thank you all again for taking the time out of your all's days to um, spread this really vital educational element surrounding um, how to best to develop a marketing campaign to all of our members and supporters. Really excited to continue um, building on the success of last year's contest and uh, turn it into an actual in-person event that we can all uh, participate in this July as well. Um, so as always, like I did mention, um, we'll send over a PDF version of today's slide deck um, to everybody for reference and review. It'll contain this contact information slide. If you want to follow up with Melinda or Tara um, to ask any additional questions on how best to position a campaign for this contest, don't hesitate to do so. And definitely make sure to follow all of their social channels and learn more about all the amazing work that they're doing um, outside of their volunteer work with NCIA. Um, to learn more about how they're advancing on um, the industry at large. <clears throat> Okay, so with that, I um, do want to just have a few upcoming uh, things to note on your calendar. Um, in case you mix the exciting news, we are currently accepting speaker applications from now through the end of the month on February 25th for our upcoming eighth annual Cannabis Business Summit and Expo taking place this coming July in San Francisco, California, once again. Uh, as all of you all know, for nearly 10 years, Cannabis Business Summit and Expo has offered the NCIA community, as well as the broader cannabis industry, a platform to convene and share best practices, discuss emerging topics, showcase business products and services, and help professionals expand their network by facilitating meaningful in-person connections with fellow business owners and operators. You definitely don't want to miss the opportunity to showcase your team's expertise and thought leadership at the industry's most influential event. So follow the link in the chat room to learn more today. Um, do note that speaker proposals from individuals operating a business in the cannabis industry must be members of NCIA and remain current through the event. If you have any questions before you dive in, uh, make sure to read that very handy three-page submission guide that you'll see linked in the submission portal. That will help answer any questions that you might have before diving into the process, um, but don't hesitate to reach out directly to anyone at the NCIA team with specific needs before, during, or after the submission process. That submission guide has some really handy timelines and dates for um, the review process and the acceptance process as well. So have some additional questions there. Um, and as you all can see here, this attendee schedule at a glance, this is a new um, schedule piece that has been updated onto the event website over the last few days. Um, we are changing the format for the conference and trade show this year in a nutshell. If you all have been participating for the last uh, few years, you'll know that we've always kicked things off with a pre-conference day, 
that consist of add-on workshops and off-site tours. Um, we're going to be uh, incorporating the off-site tours and add-on workshops into the final day this time around, so sort of swapping the format of the session um, and the conference as well. So there's going to be a, a lot of activities to engage in before, during, and after the conference in the Bay Area. Um, so definitely mark your calendars um, and consider joining NCIA so that you can get those free tickets to the conference today. All right. And with that, thank you all so much for participating in the very first NCIA Industry Essentials Educational Webinar of 2022. It really feels great to be back engaging with our network in a live format. So we sincerely hope that you'll continue your participation with these interactive educational opportunities throughout the year. Uh, head to the event section of our website following today's broadcast to secure your spot in all of our upcoming virtual and in-person events, including next week's Catalyst Conversations educational webinar, as well as our fireside chat with NCIA's government relations team. That session specifically is entitled Cannabis in the Empire State considerations, implications, and ramifications. That's gonna be debuted live next Wednesday afternoon, and it will feature um, a very special guest, New York State Senator Liz Kruger, um, alongside our dynamic uh, duo of government relations experts and the chair of NCIA's Policy Council, Michael Cooper from Madison J Solutions. Uh, that session is going to be sponsored by Next Tech Group, and we already have over 150 people pre-registered for it. Um, so expecting a really, really packed house um, and really excited to let all of you all know here first that if you are an NCIA member, you will have the exclusive opportunity to interact and ask questions of the Senator live during the broadcast. Um, so a lot of really great opportunities to um, participate um, and really engage uh, with the NCIA network, as well as all of these regulators and lawmakers across the country. Um, and with that, uh, just one last thing to note is that if you haven't already signed up for our weekly NCIA events digest newsletter, please do so. That will keep you up to speed on all of our activities as soon as they're announced and provide that supplemental resource to make the most out of your involvement with these sessions. Um, and then as we mentioned a little bit ago, we're going to be carrying on today's conversation regarding um, restrictions for SMS campaigns inside of the NCIA Connect members only community platform. So stay on the lookout surrounding um, a follow up conversation on that topic in there. A uh, huge thank you once again to all of our members for our panel for presenting today's session. Thank you both Melinda and Tara. Can't uh, wait to continue working with you and the rest of the subcommittee over the next few weeks to finalize the details for the contest. As always, we'll leave you all with this end of event credit sequence, highlighting the two over two dozen member businesses that participated in this afternoon's session, as well as our evergreen round table alongside some personally produced musical stylings to enjoy. Uh, if you don't see your company included in the slideshow, don't be discouraged. That just means that you need to head to the cannabisindustry.org slash join following today's broadcast to join the movement for a responsible and equitable cannabis industry. Hope you all enjoyed today's program. Really appreciate all your participation and engagement. And I hope to see you all again next week for our double header of industry essential educational webinars. Thank you so much for participating today. We'll see you all next week. Thank you.